Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you so much. You can hear me. You can see me. What audio is fine. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's move ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, we had done how to mm -hmm. apply the concept of uh, creative learning into real life, right? So, did you try mm -hmm. anything and were you able to do? Yeah, yeah. I, um, yeah. You could. I did a, um, word substitution and a story of pick 10 words out of a subject. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. And you could memorize, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. I, um, Great. Except the, yeah, the last one of, uh, well, actually when I like, went out for a walk to the park and then I, was, oh, I went through the story and I memorized the words and then what they're related to. Mm -hmm. But um, the last one I was like, Maybe because I added the last one way after the story because I I didn't have to add nine and then I said I'd need one more. And yeah, but now okay. I see it. Okay. Yeah. So you're comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. More or less, okay. yeah. More or less you are. Great, great. So we'll move ahead with a few more concepts today. Okay, and uh, we'll see what new things can be added into smart learning what all uh, uh, strategies are there which can be used in smart learning when it comes to creative learning. So in today's class, we'll talk about revision. We'll come to revision later. We'll talk about one more thing called direct, visualiz direct visualization method of memorization. Okay. The name of the technique is direct visualization method for memorizing anything. Now, uh, when can this direct visualization method, yeah. <clears throat> Okay. Now, when do we apply direct visualization method is if you're trying to memorize something like this, not necessarily this, but something in this form, wherein we can visualize the content of the text directly without having to do any kind of uh, creative substitution or uh, uh, all those things, right? You can directly visualize it like human heart. If we have to memorize anything about human heart, how can we do? So we can actually visualize the whole thing by ourselves and we will be able to memorize it. Now, there are 10 points. Now, what is part of those 10 points? Number one, it says it is a muscular organ as big as our fist. It's reddish brown in color and it is situated between the two lungs in the middle of thoracic cavity surrounded by two layers. Have you studied this uh, structure of human heart in your uh, st earlier studies? Have you done that ever? Um, a long time ago, my. A long time ago, yeah. Fine. But we are aware, and we are human yeah. beings, yeah. So it's something you know. It relates to us, and yeah, it would be good to know, and how to memorize it, if at all we have to memorize. So it says it's a muscular organ. Now, we can visualize this. It says it's as big as a fist. So I would want you to bring your left hand forward visualize your heart you visualize on this fist your heart is this big okay and what is the color of your heart visualize your pumping heart reddish brown in color does it have any uh, bones no no it has muscles so it is muscular in structure okay how is it it is muscular and where is it located it is on the left hand side here this is here so it is uh, uh, located where in the middle of thoracic cavity so this is our chest thoracic cavity so in the middle it is located over here surrounded by two layers that's it between two lungs okay this is the first point what is the next point it has different chambers to prevent the oxygen rich blood from mixing with the blood containing carbon dioxide so this heart is divided into four chambers. Visualize a vertical partition, a horizontal partition in your heart, which is right in front of you, right? So it has got chambers, right? All right, third point. The heart is divided into two halves. That is actually this third point should be first and then should be the second point. Yeah, I think this way it makes more sense. So the heart is divided into two halves, that is right 
and left. Okay, so it is divided into two parts. It remains one organ, but it's divided into two parts, right side and left side, and then it between line, the separation line is called septa. Mm -hmm. Okay, and each half consists of two chambers, upper and bottom, upper and bottom. That's how we say that the heart has four chambers. Mm -hmm. Okay, try to visualize this actually in front of you. This is your heart and this is how it is. The structure is. It has two partitions, left and right, and both are divided into top and bottom with the uh, as an upper chamber and a lower chamber. Okay. Now they have name. What are the name? The name is atrium and ventricle. Now this is technical. We cannot visualize. For these two terms, we can do what? We can do substitution, creative substitution. Right. Moving on to the next uh, point. It has different chambers. To now, why are these four chambers? These chambers are there so that it prevents the oxygenated blood with the dirty blood. Mm -hmm. That's carbon the reason dioxide, of having carbon. four chambers in the heart. Okay. Now, point number four. What is the point number four? There are valves between left atrium and left ventricle and right atrium and right ventricle. Meaning, on the right side, mm -hmm. top chamber and bottom chamber, in between is a valve. Mm -hmm. On the left side, top chamber and bottom <clears throat> chamber in between again is valve. So these valves, what are they doing? They prevent the backward flow of blood. Okay, so it uh, um, enables only one way passage, no return of blood. That's what the uses of valves. Okay. okay, visualize a valve on both the sides. Moving on to the next one, the sequence of events that take place during the completion of one heartbeat is called cardiac cycle. So one sequence, now how does that happen? Blood comes, goes to the lung, oxygen is going from the uh, nose, okay? Gets mixed with oxygen in the heart. So here, from here, it goes to the lungs, get mixed with the oxygen, so it becomes oxygenated blood, gets, comes back to, to your heart, okay? So now oxygenated blood is coming to your heart and from here it gets pumped to the whole body. Then once it has uh, oxygen has reached the whole body, now it is CO2 blood. So it has become a dirty blood. Carbon dioxide is mixed with this blood. It comes back to the heart. Dirty blood again goes to lungs. Gets CO2 is taken out. Oxygen is mixed. Comes back to the heart. Once again gets pumped. This is one cycle. And what is one cycle called? Cardiac cycle. Now, cardiac, I'm comfortable to remember that. If in case you find difficulty in memorizing this, you can do substitution. But I remember because I know I have heard the word cardiac arrest many wow. times. I know it is cardiac is related to heart. So I know it's a cardiac cycle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then comes what? The thin walled upper chamber, left atrium relaxes. So uh, blood enters from the left side atrium. This is left side is atrium. Atriums are on the top, ventricle is at the bottom. Now, alphabetically, what comes first, A or V? A. A. So on the top is A, atriums. Below is ventricle. Okay. So uh, first, the oxygenated blood enters on the left hand side. So clean blood is coming over here, goes down, gets pumped to the whole body. Dirty blood comes from the right side, goes down. From there, it goes to the lung. That's one cycle. Okay. So what is happening? We are directly visualizing something which is in front of us. Now, not everything is directly visualizable. Mm -hmm. There are three types of answers or three types of learnings. Number one, they are very simple. You can memorize it by themselves. You don't have to involve yourself much. I mean, it's not much uh, uh, very difficult to memorize them. They're very simple. Just do mm -hmm. that. Second, are they directly visualizable? If you're doing anything related to you, related to human beings, related to places, you know, what is the role of a, a president in the parliament? What is the role of prime minister? That is something wherein you can put yourself in the position and visualize yourself doing the things. So directly visualizable content, directly visualizable answers. If you have to learn about human brain, you can actually think yourself that you keep the brain over here and you study, okay, this is left side, this is right side and so on. So you can directly visualize certain answers, but not all of them. Like when we did algae, the answer of algae, 
mm-hmm. so human brain and uh, algae this is not visualizable oh okay, okay one second i'm not sharing the screen with you so last in the last class we discussed about algae right mm-hmm. this is not visualizable so we had to do complete creative substitution and then making a story but if you talk about human heart anything related to you you can directly visualize them mm-hmm. okay so anything is there you need can visualize and you can even memorize now when you are doing visualization direct visualization there are three ways in which you can do visualization mm-hmm. number one number one you are doing you are seeing it in front of you mm-hmm. first way like if i ask you uh, memorize the role of prime minister in the parliament or president in the parliament mm-hmm. so what all that person can do so it's going to be a list of responsibilities and jobs okay you can see as if the prime minister is in front of you and the, he or she is doing certain set of jobs mm-hmm. so one is what you are seeing things happening in front of you okay second is you are doing it yourself visualize that you are the prime minister you are doing job number 1 you are doing job number 2 you are doing this you are doing that everything imagine yourself doing those things so imagine visualize you doing it another thing imagine visualize as if things are happening on you okay so either you are watching either you are doing or it's happening on you like if i am talking about you know uh, uh, memorize the uh, human uh, stru- skeletal structure mm-hmm. so either you can see there is a skeletal structure there is a person in front of you and you can visualize the skeleton and you can do the labelings of the things you know this is this bone this is this one and so on from top to bottom or okay. you can visualize yourself the, it is on me i start from here i start from here and so on to keep touching my bones and okay these are the bones or skeletal structure of me okay Girl. but it's not possible everywhere wherever you have to ask yourself it is is it directly visualizable if it is directly visualizable well and good if it is not then you'll have to go for the other method Girl. okay and you don't have to apply creative learning all the time sometimes if the answers are very simple very easy you don't have to do anything you will just know it right right so this was one now in the last class when i was talking about creative learning there was one thing called uh, revision okay i had given you few steps right how to do studies how to study how to read why to read marking the creative uh, marking the uh, uh, your uh, keywords keyword. then converting keywords into uh, their trigger words making forming a story out of them and you would know okay mm-hmm. then comes revision <coughs> what is revision and i also told you we discussed about learning episodes mm-hmm. right we did learning episode in the last class and in the learning episode i discussed about two things two very uh, important effects the recency effect and what was the other one primacy Our... effect and recency effect primacy okay. effect and recency effect study episode is the duration for which you are studying Oh, okay that was the, the 20 right? minutes right ha huh. so in the beginning the first 20 minutes is the primacy effect that right. time primacy effect is in play whatever you will study in the first 20 minutes of your learning episode you are right. uh, you know uh, you your brain is uh, capable to memorize that much faster and much easier mm-hmm. next 10 minutes don't memorize anything new last 10 minutes is going to be the recency effect once again in the recency effect you're going to remember, be able to uh, remember it better mm-hmm. and in between is the downtime period in between in the downtime we should do revision now what is revision today we're going to discuss about that what is revision have you ever done revision um revision is mm-hmm. reviewing is it? reviewing okay how do you do a review um you usually just <laughs> go over it <laughs> you literally just read it over read it so basically yes we we may call it revision we may call it reviewing but actually we do rereading mm-hmm. right we just open the book and we read the whole thing that's what we do okay now 
according to tony buzan now who is tony buzan you can uh, search about him on internet he's the the guy yeah, who introduced memory championships right he's a person yeah. who died introduced... recently too i think yes yes he died recently tony buzan so he's the person who started world memory championships mm-hmm. according to him what he says that if you're doing revision revision should be done without books mm because revision means what reviewing as you said viewing you need to view things you need to see things you're not supposed to read things how are we going to do the revision so we are going to try and do revision of things which we have done learned in the past like in the last class we did characteristics of algae did we do that we did characteristics of algae okay mm-hmm. and uh, yeah we'll try and just review that whole information mm-hmm. we're not keeping any notes in front of me i don't have the notes in front of me you don't have the notes in front of you we'll just try and review mm-hmm. what did we study when we said uh, when we learned about uh, your uh, algae um. we had made few list of keywords okay mm-hmm. so we what how did we visualize no, now we actually have to visualize so algae was standing in the middle of the room and have having what in hand carrot carrot right and with the carrot what was it doing it's itching 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 yeah. itching what was the first point in algae according to um. now it is not your topic it is not your subject i had just All taken right. this example to explain it to you you would remember carrot and you remember itching it's absolutely fine if you would know what the answer of that uh, subject is or that topic is you would know the trigger words uh, the actual words for this too for mm-hmm. carrot it was according to you uh, it you you karyotic remember we did you karyotic yeah. yeah so yeah. it actually says that algae are you karyotic organisms mm-hmm. point number 1 then mm-hmm. with the carrot it started itching itching and what happened so when itchler. it started yes yes so according to itchler's system of classification right mm-hmm. it itching so then after that what was there when it was itching algae broke into two mm-hmm. right division division correct and then they started um tail fight tail or... fight so that second point is uh, in itchler's system of classification algae are placed in the division thallophytes mm-hmm. right thallophytes, thallophytes. thallophytes along with fungi and lichens then third one was what they were doing tail fights what happened the tail hit the hit the um something <coughs> with the aqu- aquifer, aqu- uh, aquifer no the tail hit the what did the tail hit first the photo Oh yes and in the photo right? exploded the into aquifer photo and then the photo auto and on top of the auto was a trophy so what was an extra their photo auto trophy and they do photosynthesis now we have done just three points did we need book for uh, the entire answer no no we just did what we are actually visualizing the whole story of ours Mm-hmm. whenever we doing our uh, uh, studies whenever we doing our revision but if mm-hmm. our studies are creative and if we are doing revision what you need to do is close your book <laughs> you know <laughs> i'm just thinking of all of these concepts it's you know when you were a child and i was a child as well these were the ways we learned and then they took that away <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then in order to develop this amazing memory skill, you go back to being a small child because yes. the books were in pictures. Exactly. If you read a picture book as an adult, people ridicule you like, "What are you? It's kind of stupid." Yeah, that's so true, Kevin. That's so true. That's so true. What's wrong with the world? I know. And, and you know what? I would like to just uh, uh, point out since you mentioned being uh, you know childish and being kiddish. Uh I I may have mentioned in the previous classes who are the most fastest learners in the world. Again, the children, eh? Children Abs- absorb everything like a sponge yes. even the meditation because yes. because they're in that the theta and the delta yes. during those years. And they are highly creative. They are highly uh-huh. creative during that time. 
so in case you are creative you are actually into that you know uh, delta phase your alpha phase be yeah. not being in creative takes you away from alpha phase yeah so when you are creative your uh, learning is heightened mm. and kids are like that and they are the fastest learners we have lost our creativity yeah <laughs> we try to become smart and we think that those are childish and kiddish and we, we need to get rid of those but actually <laughs> those are the things which help us you know to be uh, fast learners yeah right we need to actually go back there so this is that is what we do in creative and smart learning that be a child let the child inside be you be alive yeah it will keep you you know more happy more jolly enjoying things in a much better way rather yeah. than looking for logic and reasoning in everything right <laughs> <laughs> yeah so anyways coming back to our point we were talking about revision so what tony bazan says so if you have to do revision first thing is no books are required we don't need any books okay what we want to do is we want to close our eyes closing our eyes plays very important role in uh, smart learning and creative learning because we want you to visualize okay now uh, I, i will i mention over here once again that uh, is it uh, can we not uh, do without uh, visual, uh, without closing our eyes the answer is yes we can do it just needs practice what happens slowly like right now you have you have to close if you'll see you have to think about something you'll close your eyes and okay see i went there then i did this then i kept my things have you ever felt that you try and recall things with eyes closed yeah your focus is heightened and you're able to recall much faster after practice after continuous practice you know you will become so comfortable in visualization that you can visualize with open eyes like if i ask you that you have to go and deliver a lecture in a uh, you know in a meeting or a sesh up a, a, a speech you have to deliver you cannot keep your eyes closed over there for you to memorize right <laughs> you have to keep your eyes yeah. closed if you're in a uh, conference if you're addressing people in the conference you cannot just think like that no you have to keep your eyes closed so there is a way how to keep your eyes closed as, as uh, for us uh, the others will see the eyes are open but you are actually close shutting yourself from the world view and visualizing so mm-hmm. if you you know you, uh, have you ever done this uh, you're not seeing anything you're just gazing in space in the emptiness yeah, of yeah, space yeah. that's it like tunnel vision or something yeah so. yeah so i'm not see- looking at the monitor my laptop i'm just looking somewhere in between mm-hmm. so my eyes are open no one knows that i'm actually visualizing something over there in that space Mm. okay so visualize but in the in the beginning we would say keep your eyes closed mm-hmm. so if you are doing any kind of revision like we were doing for algae you do not need book okay mm-hmm. so we went till second point that was photo auto trophic trophy fell what happened when the trophy fell trophy fell it um ex- exploded into aquifer yes it 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 broke the ground and aquafina water came out okay and the water was reaching the fountain was re- was reaching till where to the um the arch uh the terrace of my building the terrace of my house terrace okay the terrace for terrestrial yes hello so it is they are aquatic they are terrestrial and on the terrace what was there no there was the arch arch and on the arch what was crawling the ants ants so they they arctic are and arctic and antarctic also they are found they're found everywhere we don't need books we can visualize whatever we had done okay now science says if you do smart learning with all the steps that i told you earlier either with direct visualization method or by converting them into you know using trigger words and converting uh, them into uh, any uh, you know a picture form or making stories visualizing it <clears throat> then if you will do a revision you don't have to look at the book So your book is closed and you're going to review. Now what happens when in your studies if you've done 20 minutes of study 20 minutes is primacy effect you've done 20 minutes of studies you just need maximum of 5 minutes to do the review not more than that. Right now we did algae 10 points no. for memorizing it may take 10 minutes. But when, when you, you said review, you do sorry when you said you do the 20 minutes study 5 minutes review At, are you referring to a specific time when you do an interview like is the review immediately after or any time first time it is immediately after 
we'll talk about that also okay we'll talk about that also that when do we need to do review first we're talking about how to do the review so when you're doing any kind of revision when you're doing any kind of review point number one is you don't need any books do visualization and review the answer close your eyes just recall all the technical terms and the words from the story and okay this is what the answer is you have the creative notebook in front of you but it is closed okay in case you're not able to recall anything definitely you will open the book and see okay fine i missed this point okay but otherwise close it so if you have forgotten anything you will refer to that once again do the review and close it that's it your one review is done okay now what happens when this review is done uh, if the study time was one hour review will take only five to ten minutes for the content that takes one hour to memorize takes only five minutes for revision because we have only keywords right mm -hmm. if there's a one hour content if there are let's say four or five pages we just have keywords and those keywords could be maybe 15 to 20 mm -hmm. and we can easily review those keywords and the story of that uh, keywords in five minutes and five minutes is a long time when you talk about forming story it's a long time okay now what how many revisions are required this is the way to do the division okay mm -hmm. no books eyes closed and you are doing your review in case you miss something refer to the books no problem and it will take less time than the actual study time mm -hmm. now comes how many times now if you can just note down this name eben goss forgetting curve eben goss forgetting curve or is Eben Goss? Eben Goss. E B I N. Uh, I'll share the spelling with you. Eben Goss. Yeah. Oh, wait. I'll do one thing. I'll show it to you on the screen. My my screen. Wait. Ah, Eben Goss forgetting curve. Yes. Yeah. So what does Eben Goss forgetting curve says? According to science, yeah, this is the forgetting curve. I don't okay. see it. Okay. Now, do you see? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what does this forgetting curve say? The forgetting curve says that when you are doing any kind of study, okay, you will forget it within 24 hours. Okay. Mm. So if you have memorized 100% here, by the end of six days, it will be zero. Your memory will be zero for that content by the end of six days. If you will see, you, do you see this right hand side, uh, the forgetting curve, in blue color? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is 100% memory, okay, on the x axis, on the y axis is the time in days. So till first day, if you see in one day, nearly 40 percent of the information is lost you are left with only 60 percent do you understand this can you see this chart mm -hmm. right yeah. so on first day 40 percent of information is lost you are left with only 60 percent by second day you've lost 60 percent more than 60 percent you are left with just nearly 30 percent of information by third day 80 percent is gone you have you remember only 20 percent of it and so on till the sixth day you do not remember anything from Okay, so what is happening over here? The thing is that when we are doing any kind of studies, when we are doing any kind of studies, then in that case, we will forget it very soon. We cannot remember it completely all the time. Okay, now, how do I uh, ensure that I can memorize this? How can I remember that? Now, isn't that scary that as a student, we try and memorize new things every day, and now the science says, whatever you are doing today, you will forget it tomorrow. Imagine mm -hmm. within 24 hours, you're going to lose 40% of the information. Mm -hmm. By second day, you're going to lose 60% of the information. <clears throat> and by the end of the week, you will forget everything. Now, there's nothing we can do about it. We That's how our um, brain reacts. So what to do? Now, once again, Eben Goss Curve and Tony Buzan. Combined, they say, uh, Tony Buzan says, it takes just five revisions to make anything permanent into your head. To convert short-term memory into long-term memory, it takes only five revisions. Now, how do we do this? 
there's a set method for that. And when you do that, you will remember everything. Now, we tried and memorize, uh, try to memorize your uh, algae. Okay, so it was, we did till Arctic and Antarctic, five points we did, mm -hmm. right? We did this in the last class, which was Saturday. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Friday. Okay, now we are doing after two days. So we were struggling to remember everything, but we've done one revision. Mm -hmm. So within 24 hours, you need to do first revision. So when should the revision be done? The moment you have done new topic today, do the revision immediately in the downtime. Mm -hmm. When you do the first revision, this information is intact with you inside your brain for one complete day for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. That's not what I am saying. That's what science says. All right. Okay. Give, you can give it a try. We just did uh, Algeca revision. So that means mm -hmm. till tomorrow you will remember this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if tomorrow, and so we have done this twice. So that means... When you do one in uh, within one day, you will remember it for one day. If you do the same day, if you do within twenty four hours, now this information is will stay with you for one week. Meaning, this algae answer what we've done today will stay with you till next Monday. Okay, before the whole entire week gets over, you know we go beyond one week. You do one more review. Mm -hmm. And when you do that review, this algae answer will stay with you for a month. Mm. Right? 15 to 20 days or one month, depending upon person to person sometimes, but usually it stays for a month. Mm -hmm. So if you do fourth revision, maybe around 20, 25 days, 25th day, it will stay with you for three to four months. Mm. Okay? And now... You don't have to study. Just before exam, if you study, read it once, you will be able to write your answer in the exam without any problem. Mm. So it's immediately, then one day, then one week. About then seven days. More or less. Days. Yes. That's how three, it goes. Three weeks, so a month, and then three months, yes. two, four months. So five revisions will make information permanent with you. And when I say permanent, not for lifelong, because whenever we study, we don't want information to stay with us forever. But yes, right. for one year, it will stay with you. Till you enter your examination hall, the information will stay with you. Mm. Right? But you have to ensure that you follow the rules of revision. And what are those rules of revision? Number one, no book. Mm -hmm. Right? Number two, you're keeping your eyes closed and you're trying to visualize the answer. Either if they are directly visualizable answers or they are the, uh, the, the creative answers in the form of story. Whichever method it is, you have to visualize. You have to. There's no other way. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then follow the routine. One day, seven days, 30 days, then uh, three months. That's it. And in between, you just have to nudge your brain sometime or the other you know when you know everything you just have to sit with okay this is answer one close your eyes and just nudge your brain and that's it it will become fresh again inside your brain that's it so that is the right method of revision to make things easy for you to recall and another beauty of uh, revision is that when you are <clears throat> studying like if you've done content for one hour the first revision may take five minutes mm -hmm. second revision will take just three to four two to three minutes. Third revision will take one to two minutes. Fourth revision is going to be very fast. It will be just one minute. And by the time it is fifth revision, it's going to be very quick because you've done it so many times and it is visual in nature. Okay. So now onwards, whenever you're trying to memorize something, apply this either direct visualization method or doing direct substitution, making story out of it and visualizing it. Either way, direct method or indirect method, just visualize it and apply this revision. It is scientifically proven, 100% sure, short, guaranteed method. Right? So that was about revision and direct visualization. Now, today we are going to go ahead and do one more new thing, and that is going to be making lists. So Hold on a second. Please do the rest soon.
Yeah. So, right. So, so far we've done one major method, which is a story making method, which can be used for memorizing what all things. What do you, what all do you think you can memorize with this? You can memorize a shopping list. It's story method, topics of presentation, key points of communication, form a story out of that, and you'll be able to memorize it, right? Okay, now, uh, you were able to do flags, right? We did flags, periodic table, and we did algae in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, we'll move ahead with the next topic. Today's topic is going to be list, making list. Okay, making list. Now, what do you mean by list, making a list? So, this is book tricks or memory pegs. Have you ever heard of memory pegs? I heard that term before, but um, yeah. I just heard it before. All right. So we'll try and do that today. Memory pegs for memorizing lists. Okay. So method for remembering lists in order. Like uh, in uh, story making, it's a perfect method. It's a very simple method, very easy method, very effective to memorize a list of anything. But it has few flaws, you know, few shortcomings. And the shortcomings are, like, if there's a list of 20 objects, and if I ask you that what is object number 9, or what is object number 17, you will you will have to form the story. Okay, this was the first object, second, <coughs> you'll have to form the complete story till you reach 17th object to tell me, okay, this is what is 17th object. Right? You cannot jump to object number 17 to, uh, and recall what was the information placed over there. Mm -hmm. You can memorize the list forward direction. We can memorize the list backward direction, but mm -hmm. in not in random order. Okay. So we are going to do overcome that shortcoming in the memory pegs. Mm -hmm. And how are we going to do that? I have a list over here. Okay. Bun, shoe, tree, door, hive, wix, heaven, gate, line, and pen. I want you to memorize this and I'll give you just one minute for that. Okay. I'll just start your timer and I want you to memorize this. Start. Right, so that was our list of 10 objects. So were you able to memorize? What was I don't object? know. <laughs> <laughs> let's give it a try. I don't know until I try to recall. <laughs> yeah, let's try. Um, bun. Bun. Bun, shoe. Um, tree. Door or gate. Hmm. Okay. Door. Door. door hmm. Hive. Hmm. Hive, vix, heaven, gate. Line, pen. Perfect. Absolutely fine. Okay. Now, I'll share the screen once again with you. So, how easy or difficult was it to memorize it? Oh, it wasn't. It wasn't difficult. Right? Not, yeah. not difficult. Right? It was quite easy only. The words were very simple. The objects are also easily visualizable. So, it was easy, right? How if I say, 
that uh, these objects were actually the rhyming words for numbers. <clears throat> one is bun, two is shoe, three is tree, four is door, five is hive, six is sticks, seven is heaven, eight is gate, nine is wine, ten is hen. Does that make the list easier now? Um, if you have to memorize numbers or... Okay, just, the objects. just memorize only the numbers. And only, the objects. Memorize the objects. only the objects, no numbers. So it, does it make it easier? I don't know. What, it, what is the correlation? Ha, we'll come to that now. What is the correlation? If I just say you, want, you need to memorize these 10 objects, that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so rhyme makes it easy. One, now I know it is one. Can be sun also, not necessarily bun. It can be sun also. So one, sun, two, shoe, three, tree, four, four, door, door, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, gate, nine, um, one, wine or ten, wine, or pen. pen. That's it, right? Now, how can they help us? So these are memory pegs. What are pegs? What are pegs? Uh, no, not memory pegs, in general. What are pegs? I got cylindrical stick. I just can be a peg. Yes, it can be a peg. In fact, I, sh I had a <clears throat> picture of peg here. Uh, 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 to, um, pegs are basically... Oh uh, yeah, wooden sticks on the wall where you, you can hang things, right? Mm -hmm. Right? That is what is our yeah. uh, pegs. Mm -hmm. What is the purpose of those pegs? <clears throat> Do um, you have them in your house? No, but hooks? usually they're um yeah, yeah. Do you have place hooks? things on? Yes, yes. If not I pegs, can't. we have hooks like this. Yeah. Right? To place things, to organize things, right? Mm -hmm. What is the advantage of organizing things? See, if things are organized, if I have a hook in my kitchen, so all my, you know, kitchen bags, aprons, and things related to kitchen can be hung over there. Mm -hmm. If I have in my closet, may, maybe things like my belts, my trouser, shirt may hang over there. If I have it on the gate, so I can have the, you know, coats and stuff hung over there. So what is happening over here? We have pegs to hold things, mm -hmm. right? We hang things over there and they keep it organized. When I need anything, I know which peg to reach, which hook to reach to get the, th the object what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Same way, we can hang information on these memory pegs. So bun, shoe, Three, these are nothing but memory pegs. And these memory pegs can help us to memorize certain information. What are going to be those information? That's what we are going to see in today's class. Okay. So basically, for memorizing anything in order, we can use these memory hooks. Okay. Memory pegs. Now, supposingly, we have to memorize top 10 leading currency in the world. Do you know what are the top 10 leading currencies in the world? Not all 10 of them now. Okay, so we'll try and memorize them. Okay, do we have time? Yes, I think we have time and we should be able to do this. At least this topic let's do finish today. So we'll try and memorize top 10 strongest currency, leading currencies in the world. Mm -hmm. These are the ones. The number one is Kuwaiti Dinar. Mm -hmm. Second is Bahraini Dinar. Mm -hmm. Third is Omani Rial. Mm -hmm. Four is Jordanian Dinar. Five is pound sterling, six is Gibraltar pound, then Cayman Islands dollar, then Euro, Swiss franc, and US dollar. Okay, now when I say I have to memorize a list like this, that means what information at number one is at number one, information at number five is at number five, and information at number 10 is at number 10. Right? And if I ask you what is at number six, you should be able to tell me, okay, number six is Gibraltar pound. Mm -hmm. What is at number two? You should be able to say about any dinar. How can we associate with them with memory pegs? Now, with memory pegs, what we basically do is we have these are my uh, number hook or memory pegs. 
bun, shoe, tree, door, have a look to these objects. Okay, so these are our visual objects. Bun, shoe, tree, door, hive, stick, heaven, gate, wine, and hen. Mm -hmm. Right? Then these are top 10 leading currencies in the world. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to link memory pegs with this information, something like this. So our memory pegs are bun, Kuwaiti dinar is the currency, shoe, Bahraini dinar, tree, Omani real, and so on. Okay? What will we do? The answer is very simple. We form correlation, we form stories, we form dynamic association. Right? What, what do we do? We link them together. Dynamic association, funny, illogical, weird association. Mm -hmm. What can be the association? So bun and Kuwaiti dinar. I will try five. You try five. Okay? I will do from one to five. Do do from six to ten. Mm -hmm. Okay? So bun. For bun, what is happening? Now what bun is there and Kuwaiti dinar. So for people are holding bun and standing in a queue. Okay, mm -hmm. and they are waiting for that turn. There is a dinner table in the center, or maybe ahead of the queue, there's a dinner table, and people are having dinner. Mm -hmm. And they are waiting to have dinner. Mm -hmm. And each one is having what in their hand? They're having bun in their hand. So the bun, people are standing in a queue to take the bun. Mm -hmm. They're waiting for their turn so that they can have their dinner. Kuwaiti dinar. Bun is what? Kuwaiti dinar. Mm -hmm. Right? Two is shoe. Shoe. Bahraini dinar. Now, what do I do? Bahraini dinar. Let me have some creative substitution. Bahraini, if I say bear rain, it can remind me of Bahraini. Mm -hmm. And dinar is dinner. For me, it's always dinner. If I'm doing a creative substitution, it's currency. Dinner is dinar. Mm -hmm. So, Bahraini dinar is bear rain dinner. So, shoe. Mm -hmm. Okay, who bear is wearing the shoe, mm -hmm. dancing in the rain, and mm -hmm. when it gets gets exhausted and tired, he goes home to have lavish dinner. Mm -hmm. Shoe. What is the story for shoe? Who is wearing the bear? Bear, and it's dancing in the rain. Rain. Bahrain. Bear. Bear. Rain. Bahrain. Mm -hmm. And. Then once it gets exhausted, he wants to have dinner. So what is that shoe? Bahraini dinner. Got it? Three. Three is what? Three. Oh, Omani real. Now what can be Omani, Omani, comma? Comma? Comma reminds me of Oma. And comma, ni. Can be Oma, ni. Any weird correlation. Okay? It's rhyming. Comma is rhyming with Oma. So on the tree, there's a very funny tree in, in front of my house, and I want you to visualize a tree. The <coughs> shape of the leaf is not a regular leaf shape. It is comma-shaped leaves. What are the shape of the uh, uh, leaves? Visualize. Create a tree in front of you with comma-shaped leaves. And this comma, one comma fell down and hit you on your knee. Imagine a leaf fell and hit you on your where? Knee. knee. You were badly hurt. You made a, you know what reels are? Is Instagram reels? Small 30 second reels? Yeah, yeah. Real, like that, film right? or yeah. film reels, yes. So you got hurt. Now you are hurt. So if you if you are visualizing film reels, so you you didn't did not have a band-aid. So what did you do? You up you tie your hurt with the reel, movie mm. reel. Okay, so tree. What is tree? It is comma ni real, omani real. Mm. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. Yes. Four is door and it is Jordanian dinar. Mm -hmm. Jordanian, so jar, Jordanian jar, jar and den. Either jar and den, and if it is about country, jar is enough for me to remind Jordanian because there's no other country by starting with jar or jar. Mm -hmm. Okay, so jar is enough. So door, jar, den, and again dinner. Mm -hmm. So on the door of my house, wherever I'm sitting, just visualize that. See, look at the door in front of you. Mm -hmm. The handle of the door is not regular. It is actually a jar. The mm -hmm. handle is actually a jar. So the jar is stuck over there and we open the door with the 
handle of the jar mm -hmm. so jar okay and when we open the door and go inside we have our dinner mm. okay so the door is what the handle of the door is made up of jar we open go inside and have dinner it is jordanian dinar five mm. is hive pound sterling so hive hive is what beehive mm -hmm. so i have a beehive now these bees are very funny all the bees are coming out and they're jumping into a pond mm -hmm. have you seen pond mm -hmm. visualize the bees they are jumping into the pond and as they are jumping into the pond the water is splashing but instead of water what is coming out stars are coming out what is coming out star pound sterling okay i made a very funny story now let's recall the story from 1 to 5 one bun what was happening with bun bun is the um the waits waiting in a queue people waiting in a queue so queue wait what for the bun so kuwaiti for dinner it's a queue for dinner so kuwaiti dinner number 1 that is the strongest currency number 2 shoe shoe that was a beer rainy dinner so bahraini dinar right mm -hmm. three tree three trees comma um comma ni comma comma ni um omani yes omani omani, omani um you applied so, real on your heart omani real 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 so it's real so i i made the trigger word as real omani real four door doors jordanian um it's dinar jordanian dinar dinar, dinar again five hive hive so that was the um beehive um pond What is coming out? St Starling. Pound Pound Sterling. Sterling. Perfect. Those were our top five currencies. Let's try six to ten together. Okay. And then we'll see how it helps us, and how memory pegs help us. So we have six. Right. Six, six. sticks and Gibraltar pound. Give it a try. Sticks, Gibraltar pound. What can be the create a substitution gibraltar um um all maybe something alter and mm -hmm. um how about zebra what's that Gib zebra zebra animal zebra uh -huh. gibraltar so zebra zebra on the altar Zebra, no. Okay. Zebra alter, zebra alter, right? Zebra alter. Okay. Uh, I guess. <laughs> you can do anything. You can drop yeah, zebra yeah, yeah. if you can. If alter helps you remember, memorize, uh, recall zebra alter. Perfect. Mm -hmm. You can do that. Okay. And pound. What can be the story with sticks? Starting with sticks. Um. There's a. pound of sticks on the altar fine like um sticks. we call the sticks you burn um palo yes. santo sticks yes yes so sticks are there so pound of sticks on the altar perfect then heaven heaven came in i uh, heaven came in heaven islands dollar islands dollar heaven um, heaven heaven Oh, I would I would just remember that from just Cayman Island. It's it's Because a very it, um, beautiful <laughs> heavenly place. Perfect, perfect. You do not island. have to do creative substitution all the time. If you memorize it straight away, absolutely fine. Go ahead, Cayman Islands, and it is heavenly. Leave it, Cayman oh. Island dollar. Gate eight is gate euro. Eight, eight euro um gate or um euro you. Row or gate, um, your row or um. It's 
slightly tricky. What I did, I'll just share my experience. For your, your. So I started anything with your. Could be yoga, yo yo. Because your, your is only one currency, your. And it's very tricky. It is EU, but we say yo. So yo yo or uh, yoga, anything to start with. Yogurt, anything can be taken on the gate and form a story. Okay. Yeah, if, if you if at all you're finding because what are the rules for creative substitution? Either similar sounding mm -hmm. or any correlation mm -hmm. or rhyme. Mm -hmm. Okay, so eight euro. Eight gate euro. So on the gate, maybe you are eating yogurt. Mm -hmm. okay. You're standing on the gate. Literally. Eating yogurt. Eating yogurt. Or maybe no, painting. Yogurt. Eating is fine. So you are taking yogurt and painting on the gate. That is more weird. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're painting yogurt. So yo is your euro. Mm -hmm. Wine is Swiss franc. Wine, Swiss franc, franc, French wine or yes, French wine. This. Yes, French wine, absolutely fine. So Swiss franc can be uh, remember recalled that way. Yes, French and wine. Swiss can be what? Exquisite French wine. Huh? Or sweet? <laughs> make make it sweet. sweet because we, we want yeah. it to be visualizable. Exquisite is a word, maybe it's a feeling, you know, we, we express, but not an object. Okay. Right? A sweet, sweet is there, okay. and French wine is there. So why? Yeah. Swiss sweet will remind me of Swiss and Frank. Or maybe if, if I can just, uh, uh, it's a French wine. I know it is Frank is Swiss Frank. It could be like mm -hmm. that also. You don't have to do creative substitution for everything. Mm -hmm. And 10 hen is US dollar. Mm -hmm. So what is the 10? US dollar hen. Um... Mm -hmm. US dollar hen. For dollar? Can you think of anything for dollar? Um. Doll. 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 That's doll. it. Hen is holding doll and running around. And dollar is only US dollar. That's it. There's no other dollar. Okay. Now, we tried and associated some information with the memory pegs. Mm -hmm. What was the seventh currency? Seven, heaven, Cayman Island, dollar. No. What is the No, uh, not dollar. Is it dollar? Huh, Cayman it's Island, dollar. dollar. Cayman yeah. Island, dollar. Uh, currency at number two, shoe. Two, shoe. That would be the Bahrainian um, dinar. Absolutely fine. Number seven. Uh, at number eight. Eight. That was um, painting the gate. With yogurt. Uh, yo. So euro. Euro. Wonderful. One. One was a um, bun. That's the Bahrainian dinar. One is bun. People are waiting with bun. buns in their hand. Oh, wait, wait, okay. In a queue, Kuwait, Kuwait, Kuwait dinar. dinar. Ten. Ten is, um, what's that? Hen. Ten. So that was the doll, US dollar. Very good. Then uh, three. Three is, um, three tree. is for tree, right? Mm -hmm. So tree to comma, the comma, ni. Oma. Oma. Omani. Okay. O Omani dinar again. Ah, Omani. Real. No, no. Real. Real, yeah. Because of the then, real. Uh, yeah. Nine. Nine vine switch franc. Very good. Then four. Four door jar Jordanian dinar. Very good. Five. Hive. All right. So the hive. Where were the bees jumping? Hive. Bees were jumping into a pond. Pond. And what so was coming pound, out? Pound sterling. Pound sterling. Wonderful. Do, do you realize what we tried right over here and how easy it was to memorize, you know, us information on um, a sequence of 10 mm -hmm. by just correlating it with this memory peg? 
Mm. You can try and remember anything with such memory packs. We've done just one memory pack today. We'll do the rest of the packs in the next class. Okay. Mm -hmm. So next, you can also try and memorize anything. Top 10, bottom 10, 10 things. Associate them with these memory packs. One to 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now how we are able to do that, that idea behind that we'll do in the next class. Any doubt in today's session? Um, no. No. So what you can do is as a homework, you try and memorize anything top 10, like top 10, we have done this. So maybe you can take top 10 uh, currency we've done. Uh, most populated countries. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll, 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 figure, I'll figure out some. I'll yeah. Yeah. Some. Anything, anything, any top 10 which you can associate it with your memory pegs. Now, these memory pegs is what is important. And what are the memory pegs that you need to take note of? They are bun, shoe, tree, door, hive, gate, then uh, heaven, gate, wine, and hen. And it could be yours so, also. Okay, so I would can, use those same ones or if I find another word. Right now, wrong. use the same one. I'll tell you how to create more pegs in the next session. So bun, shoe... Tree, door, hive, sticks, heaven, gate, wine, hen. In fact, I would also give you the homework to try and come up with rhyming words for 11 to 20. Okay, because you may have to Fine. memorize sometimes list of 20 things. It may not be 10. Mm -hmm. 11, 12 to 20. So try and create the rhyming words for them. Or one more, another exercise that I give to my students is, if supposedly you want to memorize a book, the content of a book. Mm. So use these memory pegs to memorize the index, chapters of the book. Just the name of the chapters, not the chapter, chapter content. Mm. I'll tell you in the next class to memorize the chapter content, but just the name. Okay. okay. So that would be your homework. And uh, I'll meet you in the next class with this homework and the next topic ahead. So something that would rhyme with 13? Like... Give, give it a try. <laughs> you can search online. You have internet at your disposal. You'll, you'll see something. That how we can have things for memorizing from 11 to 20. Okay. Okay. But at least till 1 to 10, try and memorize the index of any book. Okay. Right? Fine. I'll see you in the next class then. There's no doubt, right? right? Mm -mm. Okay, all the best. Have a good day. And uh, yeah, see you in the next class. Bye. Ciao. Bye.